Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Yada and on this channel I post faith-based videos. As I spend time with God every single day, He lays certain topics on my heart and then I feel compelled to share these topics with you guys as well. So if you are richly blessed by this video or any of the videos you've seen on my channel, please be sure to subscribe. And yeah, today we're going to be talking about the two blind men Jesus healed in the Bible. So let's just get right into this video. Okay, so Matthew chapter 20, verse 29 to 34 says, Now as they went out of Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the road, when they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, Son of David. Then the multitude warned them that they should be quiet, but they cried out all the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, Son of David. So Jesus stood still and called them and said, What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. Okay, so first of all, these two men were blind, so they could not physically see with their eyes, but they knew of Jesus. It basically, if you're sitting there all day long, you're hearing the commotion happening around you all the time. So they must have heard people talk about Jesus this guy who's healing people. Um, they must have heard of the miracles he was doing and the signs and wonders. So they were hearing about all these things. So because they were hearing about these things, they received faith in their heart. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So these two blind men were hearing about the things Jesus was doing and I believe that's when they received faith in their heart. So in this specific moment, they're hearing a ruckus. They're hearing the commotion of the crowd so they know that Jesus is there. So what do they do? Because of that faith in their heart, they cried out to Jesus. If they had no faith in their heart, guys, they wouldn't have cried out to God. They wouldn't have cried out to Jesus. How are you going to cry out to Jesus, a person who's supposedly healing people and giving people sight and, you know, casting out demons, if you have no faith in your heart? These two blind men cried out for mercy. That's so interesting. They weren't like, Jesus, heal us. They had humility. They were like, Lord, have mercy on us. And they recognized that Jesus was this powerful prophet. Um, they're not worthy of him. So like, Lord, if you have mercy, heal us. When these two blind men cry out to Jesus, immediately the crowd is like, be quiet, shut up. As a person desires to pursue God or even starts to pursue God, the devil will use people around them to discourage them from doing that. There's so many different ways he does this. It could be through family members. You know, a person can just be wanting to go to church and their mom is like, no, why are you going to church? Don't go to church. Church has nothing to offer you. And they'll start saying things and, you know, going up down a whole list of reasons why this person should not go to church. It could be your friends. Your friends are like, why are you getting into religion? You're crazy. You're stupid. You're so silly. Like, this is going to be a waste of your time. It could be social media. The devil can use different avenues to discourage you from pursuing Jesus. And sometimes, if people are not careful, They'll just take that as a, okay, I shouldn't do this. They will just stop pursuing God. But in this situation, the two blind men weren't like, okay, let's just be quiet because the crowd told us to shut up. They were like, no. And in fact, the Bible says that they cried out even more saying, have mercy on us. Oh, son of David, Jesus, have mercy on us. What does Jesus do? Jesus stops. So yes, he was walking with the crowd. They were moving along, but Jesus stops and stands still. He turns to the two blind men and he says, what do you guys want me to do for you? He asks them this question. I love this so much. God knows our thoughts before we even tell him what's going on. He knows what we're thinking. I think of Philippians 4, 6. The Bible says that we should not be anxious or worried or concerned about anything. But by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let God know our requests. Let him know what we desire. In this certain situation, Jesus was doing the same thing. He's like, yeah, I can see that you're blind. But what do you want me to do for you? The two blind men in response say, Lord, so that we may see, so that our eyes may be opened. It's interesting because that's what they asked for, which shows us that that was what they valued the most, their sight. See, a lot of times we come before God, it could be us Christians or even people who are not saved. We want him to do things for us, but it's like we don't really understand the value of what we're asking of. People say, why can't God give me money? Why can't God give me a, a big house? Why can't God give me success? What are these things? Are these things valuable? Are these things truly valuable? No. In fact, James 4 says that when we ask, we ask amiss, that we may spend it on our pleasures. In other words, when we're asking God for things, we're asking for things that just are not that valuable. So why would God answer us? And unfortunately, a lot of Christians, we can ask God for things and he's looking at us like, you're kidding. And that's why it's actually so important to know what the will of God is. And the Holy Spirit also. 
thank the Lord. He knows what God's will is. So when we pray in tongues, when we pray in the Spirit, He's praying on our behalf. Back to what I was saying with these two blind men, they recognize that the most important thing for them was so that they can see. And God's will is for us to see. God not just physically see, but I would say spiritually see. Spiritually see the truth. A lot of these people in this world are living in darkness. People who are not living for Christ are living in darkness. The God of this world has blinded the minds of people so they're not able to see. And so when we come to Christ, that veil is removed so that we're able to see the truth. Another key thing is that Jesus had compassion on them and then he laid his hands on their eyes and they received their sight. Compassion. In fact, Jesus had this habit of having compassion for people. In Matthew 9, it talks about how he had compassion for the people because he saw them and he recognized that they were like weary without a shepherd. That's a beautiful testimony. Jesus had a habit of having compassion on people before he healed them, before he casted out these demons, before he raised the dead, he had compassion for them. It's almost like it's a prerequisite, not just compassion, but also love, charity. And 1 Corinthians 13 talks about that. Now, yes, we can prophesy, yes, we can speak in tongues, yes, we can give to the poor, but if we don't have love, all of this is vanity. All of this is done in vain. So the Bible says that they immediately received their sight. What did they do? What was their response? So it's like they've been blind. We don't know how long these men have been blind for, but they've been blind for, I'm gonna guess, a pretty long time. They cry out to Jesus. They say, Lord, have mercy on us. And he heals them. What is their response? Their response is to follow Jesus. These two blind men started to follow Jesus. This should be the response of every single person who has a supernatural encounter with God. And unfortunately though, that's not the case for every single person. Because there are people who've encountered Jesus. Maybe they cried out to Jesus for something. Maybe they were in a predicament and they cried out to Jesus that he would heal them or save them or deliver them. He does. And they're like, okay, cool. And they just continue living their life. And some people actually do this thing where they promise God things. Like, God, if you get me out of this situation, I promise I'm going to live for you. If you heal my mom, I promise I'm going to serve you. And then once that thing happens, they forget about their promise to God and they just go live in their lives. But no, that was not these blind men's testimony. They responded by following Jesus. That is what we need to do. When God meets us where we are, when we have an encounter with him, our response of gratitude should be, Lord, I'm gonna follow you. I'm gonna follow you and I'm gonna live for you. Make it right with God today. Maybe you need to receive sight. It could be physical sight. It could be you have a physical impairment of you need healing in your body. It could be you suffer with depression. It could be you suffer with anxiety. You have the fear of being alone. You have no idea where you're going in life and you just need help. Call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 11 says whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Cry out to God. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. Cry out to Jesus. If you call out to him with a genuine heart, acknowledge that you're a sinner and ask for his mercy and his forgiveness, he will grant these things to you. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 to 5 says, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. See, God is a God who is rich in mercy. Even when we were dead because of our sin, even when we were blind because of our sight, even when we were unclean because of because we were sleeping with people, he still died on the cross of our sins. He still paid the price for us. Psalm 145 verse 8 to 9 says, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. That is the Lord. He is a God who's slow to anger, slow to wrath, but great in mercy. See, these two blind men, when they cried out to Jesus, he could have been like, what do you want? What's your story? Mm, you sinned? Okay, no, you deserve to be blind. No, he was so great in compassion. He was like, what do you guys want me to do for you? You know, that's the love of Christ. And one of my favorite scriptures, 2 Corinthians 5.15 says, And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. That should be the response for every single person who encounters Jesus. I'm not going to continue to live for myself. I'm going to live for Jesus. These two blind men could have easily been like, thank you, God. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Okay, and then get up and then continue living their life. They're like, no, we need to follow this guy. We need to live for this guy. We need to live for Jesus. John 6, 35 to 37 says, And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. 
Whoever comes to Jesus, he will not cast you out. Like I said in Romans 10, 11, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Give him a chance. We live in a world today where it's like we want people to, to forgive us of our past sins and mistakes and people are just not willing to do that. They're like, nope, I'm not giving a chance again. That is not God. He's so rich in mercy, so rich in compassion. One more scripture for you guys. Matthew 16, 24 to 25 says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake, he will find it. That is Jesus. He wants us to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow him. Will you do that today? Maybe you're watching this and you're not living for Christ, but you know that you are struggling with whether it's depression, anxiety, whether it's you have substance abuse, whether it's you're just tired of living, you're just so confused as to why you're on earth and what your goal and what your purpose is for this life. Cry out to God. Jesus knows you, he loves you, he made you, and he has a perfect plan for your life. If you don't cry out to him, how is he going to help you? How is he going to save you? How is he going to give you sight like he did to these two blind men? Maybe you're already saved, so you know Jesus, you're living for him. Maybe this video is a good reminder that without Jesus, you can't receive sight. Without him, you can't, you know, live the best life you could possibly live. Maybe it's a reminder that you need to continue to follow Jesus. Maybe you're a backslider. Maybe you were once living for Christ, but you turned away. This video is a good reminder for you to get back on track. You're not promised tomorrow. I'm not promised tomorrow. If this video really ministered to you, please give this video a big thumbs up. Share this video with a friend who you know will benefit from this video. And I'll see you guys by God's grace in the next one. Bye.